Good morning, welcome to Morning Prayer from Dedham Vicarage. My name's Anthony, you're very welcome as you join us for Morning Prayer from Dedham Vicarage. If you want to join in with the order of service, go to our website, dedhamandardleyparishes.org.uk and you'll see our details on the website there and you need to click on the button on the home page and you'll find Morning Prayer Celtic. And I'm just gonna get my words in place. then we can begin. We're also journeying through 2 Timothy and today uh, we come to a passage in 2 Timothy chapter uh, chapter 2 verses 14 to 26. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I've asked of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your hearts? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And so today, the scripture reading is... 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 14 to 26. Keep reminding God's people, Timothy, of these things. Warn them before God against quarrelling about words. It's of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Harmenius and Philetus, who departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So, flee the evil desires of youth, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. Well, you might be wondering why I've got um, a food caddy and a bowl of fruit on the table. More of that in a moment. So Paul now um, launches into some specific instruction for Timothy. And this instruction is positive and negative. Negatively, he's told what not to do. And I wonder if you can identify those not to's. Verse 14, don't quarrel. Verses 16 to 17, avoid godless chatter. Verse 18, uh, sorry, verses 22 and 23, flee the evil desires, and don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. So the context here is that all of these things were going on in the context of this young church. And Timothy, that Paul's, uh, the, 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 Paul is handing on the ministry to him, as we know, this, this baton, he's really trying to encourage Timothy to be the best leader that he can be. So he's giving him as much instruction and teaching and encouragement as he can. 
And so he says positively, what you must do. Present yourself to God as one approved, one who correctly handles the word of truth. And uh, towards the end of the passage, someone who's not quarrelsome, but kind, able to teach and able to gently instruct. So there's a mixture of things of instructions to Timothy and to leaders, as this book has always been helpful to leaders all the way through the centuries. Paul also identifies some people who had fallen into the trap of heresy. These two characters, Harmanius and Philetus, who said that the resurrection had already taken place. And they were not referring to Jesus's resurrection because obviously that had already taken place, but the resurrection of the dead. Um, and uh, Jesus's teaching was that that would not happen until the last days, the end, the end times. So what about this metaphor, though, in verses 20 and 21, and hence my uh, visual aids here. Paul talks about noble and ignoble use for vessels. Now, in other places, in, in Romans, he's talk, he talks about um, vessels. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he talks about us being earthenware vessels. So it's a, it's a, it's a common reference of Paul, a co common metaphor that he, that he uses. Um, different translations will use different uh, versions, but in this translation I've got here special purpose and common use. So if you think about these two bowls, I've got this rather beautiful bowl here that I put my fruit in, which is there on the table normally, um, and it's a nice thing to look at, and not only that, it's a useful shape to contain fruit. But I've also got in the kitchen my uh, council caddy into which I put the scraps and then they get taken away each week. And so one is for special use and the other is a bit of milk, kind of common use. And, and actually, when I take this one out and uh, tip it into the larger one and take it, to the, take it for outside, then actually I generally need to wash my hands afterwards. Whereas when I pick this one up, I don't need to do that. And I think Paul is using this as a metaphor and he's saying to Timothy, Cleanse yourself from the latter type. Don't get involved in all of these things I've just been describing. Wash your hands, really, of them. Keep clear of them. Flee lust, pursue righteousness, avoid heresy. Be kind and gentle and instruct your opponents. And so that's the list of instructions that Paul gives to Timothy, his apprentice. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who seek to be your apprentices. We pray for Christian leaders. Help us, Lord, to follow your guidance and instruction for us. We pray for our leaders in this area, Lord. We pray for Ruth, our Archdeacon. We pray for uh, Roger, our Bishop, and for Peter, standing in in the interregnum as Bishop of Chelmsford. Lord, guide and inspire them, I pray. Amen. Lord, today also we pray for schools, many schools locally going back properly um, in a staged way this week. We pray for the staff, for the children, for the parents. We pray that you'd help them to get their heads around the way they're going to work in this new era. Please protect and watch over our schools, thinking particularly of Ardley and Dedham, of Donna and of David, the head teachers there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And two, we pray for businesses, Lord. We pray for businesses locally, especially those struggling financially. And we think of the support that there has been through the Eat Out and Help Out scheme, but that's now ended. And we think of the hospitality industry locally and the people that rely upon it for their livelihoods. Father, we pray your blessing and your guidance upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we say this canticle together. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, 
in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. And so may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he's shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a really good day ahead, and maybe see you for evening prayer at five o'clock.